With us now on set is Andy Pratt. We're going to be listening to a song that he wrote about his wife. Welcome to the show, Andy. Oh, thank you. Great. Let's hear it. Hello, everybody. This is the first public performance of this song. It's about my wife, and it goes like this. Goodbye, money. Goodbye, money. Oh, boy. Every single thing I remember between me and you the way you said I hate you the way you tore away but I don't mind I love you turn to every single day I remember I remember all the games we played here comes the cornbread the cornbread and the festival go morning and evening sunrise and autumn all the days all the nights and all the boys who want to fight and all Speaking into telephones Kind of like a Brian Wilson song, you know Speaking into cars And all the poison and cartography Everything we are I'll be there when you need me <laughs> so Andy Pratt, um, for our beautiful, wonderful audience that's watching, can you tell us a little bit, because you've had a wonderful, long, fantastic career in the industry, and we were talking, it started like early in the 70s, and you were signed yes. by Clive Davis. Right, I so was. So let's talk about that like moment in time for okay. you. Time travel with me. Well, a long time ago, I did this whole record, which, well, I did a song, Avenging Annie, which you, I guess you're going to show, which is the song that made me super famous, famous. once <laughs> and uh 
I worked with this uh, producer named John Nagy, who had been in the whole Boston scene. There was a band called Earth Opera, and there's a David Grisman, this kind of famous uh, mandolin player. He was in that band, and they all played on my record in those days. Self-titled Andy Pratt. Self-titled Andy Pratt, right. You've got to put all the details in. <laughs> and then um, and, uh, we went to New York with... Uh, Nagy t took me to New York and set up in a recording studio, and Clive Davis comes walking in with his entourage, you know, and we played two songs, which were Give It, Give it All to Music and Avenging Annie, and Clive said, sign him up, you know. So that was 73, and that was amazing. And then he took me to Nat Weiss, who was a... Uh, he managed... Uh, he was friends with, with Brian Epstein, the Beatles... Uh, manager and he had the Nat Weiss had the Beatles signature on his on his door in his apartment he was a gay man he was a lawyer and uh, Paul wrote Nat is love and John Lennon wrote and he's your date because Nat was gay you know and, right. uh, <laughs> that was a, it was a pretty wild time back there so uh, that, and that was definitely the music scene I mean it was like yeah, the yeah, right in the heart yeah, of yeah, all of it yeah. tell us about that song um, the whole avenging theme and and how that all came okay. about. Okay. Well, I was, uh, we were all smoking uh, marijuana in those days. Okay. And people still are. Now it's legal, of course, but I had to stop because I did too much of it. But I was a bit stoned and I was listening to uh, the Birds record, Sweet, Sweetheart of the Rodeo, which I was a big uh, McGuinn fan and stuff. And he had the song, Pretty Boy Floyd song, uh, whatever that song is, you know, it starts to sound like, it's like, it's called uh, Pretty Boy Floyd, I guess. Uh, it was, uh, the song was written by uh, Woody Guthrie, that's it. So then I, I started playing that song on the piano, and then it turned into this whole s sort of Bachian thing on the piano, and, and, and the whole story of my marriage came out, and I was the outlaw, and she was the, you know, woman and all that stuff. And, and you kind of, you were telling me um, in the green room that you kind of came from like a well-to-do family. I did. Okay. The so Pratt family. The yes. Pratt family. The right. Pratt family. Right, right. So you came from a well-to-do family. Yeah. Um, uh, but your journey as a musician kind of twisted it a little bit, right? Like you, you were allowed to kind of, I would say, play outside of the lines in a way. You know, because well, you went, I, you were edu well-educated. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about like, because it's, you're kind of... You're an interesting character, Andy Pratt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not very stereotypical of somebody that grew up the way that you grew up. So I guess that's what I was well, trying to describe. Well, it was the time describe. I grew up in. It was a hippie days and, okay. and you know, the, the convention in Chicago and, and all that kind of stuff, you know. And every, I think everything happened in the 70s that, that it's still happening, you know, in a different way now. But... Uh, your my parents, mother was yeah. a piano player. My mother was a, you know, I, I grew up as a, as a child uh, listening to my mother play classical piano with her, my grandmother, and, you know, they'd fight over the music. It didn't play that right and all that <laughs> stuff. So that's what I heard in my childhood. But I, the first music I heard was like Rachmaninoff and, and all this beautiful classical music and stuff. And um, I began to just love music. And, and my, my, actually, my uncle gave me a radio, and I went up in my room listening to the radio to all this Buddy Holly and all the stuff that was on the radio then. And I became like a radio addict. So I'm still listening to the radio. Still listening to the radio. Be, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at uh, your famous song. Sure. You ready? Yeah.
excellent. So that was a life-changing moment for you too. Yeah. Yeah. What happened after that for you? Well, after that, um, we put a band together um, and we were rehearsing in the Aerosmith studio. They had a stu studio up there and, and we were rehearsing there and we went out on the road for two years. I was in the big time for like four years, uh, way back, 73 to 77. And I had this guitar player, Mark Doyle from Syracuse, who was an amazing musician, plays guitar and jazz piano and all that stuff. And, and he and I, we wrote songs together. And well, the, the, there was an album before the Avenging Any album called Records Are Like Life, which is a very jazz influenced record. It's a good record. It's uh, they can find them all on Amazon if you want, you know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Did you, when you got your first pressing of your first vi piece of vinyl, yeah. do you still, did you frame that? Do you have no, that? No, no, so what no. did you do, So what did you do with that? You, you well, I've moved so much. I've lost so many things, all these I think somebody needs to get you a, a copy of your own thing on vinyl. Well, you can get uh, on vinyl. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know, we just all mm -hmm. CDs now, it's you know. CDs. But it was on vinyl, yeah. It was, it's called right. Records Are Like Life. It's a really good record. And when you heard it on the radio for the first time, what was that like for you? Well, I heard, uh, I didn't hear that one on the radio, but I heard Avenging Annie on the radio. I, I have a memory of uh, the Columbia promo guys from the, that day. Was, one was named Sal and Jimmy or something, and we, we uh, drove around Boston, and it was the first time I ever saw a cell phone, and they were talking on, on cell phones in those days. They were large, though, back then, Yeah, they right? probably <laughs> were. Yeah, right. And, and um, the song came on the radio, and it sounded great. And we're driving around. He's calling up RKO and MEX and those Boston stations to so play the song. You know, they're playing, you know, that stuff. So that was exciting and stuff. And uh, then, I, then I actually was in the hospital in Boston getting a knee operation. I'd call up the radio station and say, please play my song. Aww. And they did, you Aww. know. Andy, so that's that, so sweet. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed that you're playing a Taylor guitar. I'm playing. And, and the Taylor that you're playing, I mean, it looks like you've been playing it for a while. How right. long have you had that with you? Well, once I went into a, a store in Nashville, and the guy said, it looks like Willie's guitar. Okay. Because I, I was busking on the streets of Boston and stuff and, you know, tearing it up, you know. Road warrior. Yeah, right. Well, I thank you very much for yeah, joining us. Nice. You know, I know that you came in from Boston, and yeah. we loved having you here. Sure. Um, and any special um, shout outs you'd like to give to anybody? Well, please support this organization called World Without War um, dot org. That's a wonderful organization. It's like a Quaker organization trying to get rid of all the war in the world. And, you know, that, that would be a wonderful thing if we could get rid of that. You have a good heart. So we've been uh, visiting with Andy Pratt. Stay tuned for more on Live It Up, and please let the music play on.